Hi, I'm Pastor Chris Hawkins, pastor of Morningstar Lutheran Church. Morningstar's mission is clear, that we are called as disciples to bring the light of Christ to all creation. Born out of our most recent strategic mission plan, our congregation was led to a bold and exciting vision for its future. Through much prayer and conversation together as a congregation, Morningstar Lutheran Church was led by the Holy Spirit to identify two aspirations for the next few years of our mission together. These two aspirations are one, we will work to revitalize our worship services to maintain excellence and provide hospitality for all of God's people. And two, we will address the functionality of our worship space and determine how it can be made more inviting and accessible to our community. Since that time, it has been made clear because of our location in the heart of Omaha, in addition to our continually expanding outreach ministries, that bringing the light of Christ to all creation also means opening up our beautiful and inspiring building to the community. Quite unexpectedly since 2020, as you know, in the COVID pandemic, Morningstar has become really a place of hope and healing for the community and many who enter our space, not just on weekends for worship, but also during the week. This, of course, not only includes our early childhood education center, but also the hundreds of people who now seek out our facility to attend one of the numerous support groups in our midst. The question, I think, is how can we continue to use our space to serve in the District 66 area and beyond? How can we continue to partner with organizations like the Boys and Girls Club, with Faith Partners, with Table Grace Cafe, with Lutheran Family Services, or perhaps even our local hospital systems? I think God is urgently equipping us as disciples to be the church and to share the gospel in the world, and part of that calling is using our building to do so. I believe that the Holy Spirit is up to something exciting at Morningstar as we live out our mission and have become really a beacon of light in the heart of our community. We might ask ourselves what this means as we seek to share the gospel of Jesus Christ through not only our worship together as a congregation, but also what does it mean in our ministry to those who are outside of our walls, if you will, for those who are thirsty for a word of hope and healing. In John's Gospel, Jesus encounters a Samaritan woman at a well. She's there at the hottest part of the day to avoid those whom she knows really don't accept her for who she is. This woman is there because she, of course, needs water, but she needs more than just water. She needs love. She needs a place of acceptance. She needs a place free from the shame of those who have been taught to turn their backs on her. So there she encounters Jesus at the well and it changed her life. Morningstar is and can continue to grow as a place where people encounter the freely given love of Christ Jesus. We can be, and I challenge us to be, that living well for the community in order to change lives through the gospel. You and I have witnessed so many amazing examples of how this has taken place in this community and how it's responded to others in need. It happens on a weekly, if not daily basis because of your faith, because of your support of our mission. There's no question that as a faith community, this is one of our most primary and urgent callings in our ministry together. As we seek to refresh and transform an already beautiful church home, I invite you now to join me in our church leadership as we share this transformative, enlightened project with its exciting vision for Morningstar's future. As this exciting vision is shared with you now, I want to invite you to consider how God might be calling you to be part of it. It's not only our church home, but it's that living well for the community, both now and for generations to come. If you're so inspired as I am as your pastor, I want to invite you to consider how a financial gift and a commitment, no matter its size, might make a difference for those who thirst for the love of Christ in this place. Your stewardship makes a difference. Imagine approaching our congregation from 85th Avenue and parking and you see this wonderful welcoming outdoor space for worshipers, which will also serve our neighborhood. It's an inviting and thoughtful design for those who seek a contemplative experience or for small groups who would like to be in conversation together. Our prayer garden will feature a zero-entry walkway for wheelchair access. 
Imagine opportunities for an intimate outdoor worship experience or even a venue for small outdoor weddings. This will be a place that will help ground anyone entering our building with a sense of the sacred, preparing them for worship and an experience with the divine. Much thought has been given to the west side of our building and the circle entrance. As we rethink access to that west entry of Morningstar, much consideration was given to parking. Along our circle drive, we will be adding diagonal parking, which will accommodate those who require closer access to the building. We'll also be fully ADA compliant with wheelchair access from the parking area. As we consider the east parking lot, just outside of our early childhood education center, we will be replacing a crumbling asphalt lot with a brand new concrete parking lot. Disintegrating areas of the north lot will also be repaired with new concrete and restriped. One of the most striking features of our church entrance is the two-story stained glass window. It makes an impression. These windows, of course, share the commission that Jesus gives to his disciples in Matthew 25. It calls us to serve the hungry, to welcome the stranger. That window also shares a dramatic scene of Jesus rescuing Peter from the sea. It symbolizes Jesus' own redemptive hand into our lives as disciples. Not only are we restoring those panels to make this beautiful wall, but we're also adding two lower panels to match the existing scene. These panels will remind worshipers of their own commissioning to go out and to share the gospel through the sending we so frequently hear at the end of worship together, to go in peace and to serve the Lord. Our entire welcoming space, or narthex, will receive new carpeting, light fixtures, and seating areas. This is needed as we consider this a space where we not only encounter one another in community, but also welcome the stranger in our midst. One of the features I'm most excited about, and I hope that our congregation will be too, is our living water font. This font will be placed just outside of our amazing sanctuary, and it will be a focal point for all who enter. This font features marble finishes and a stone veneer, symbolizing the well of living water that our ministry is all about. An octagonal vessel, which symbolizes the day of new creation or the eighth day, will sit just above a round well. It will spill water into an artisan crafted mosaic tile basin. The colors of the mosaic tiling will echo the rich, deep, vibrant colors of our stained glass windows that adorn the perimeter of our sanctuary. Those windows, of course, tell the story of the gospel. Etched into the facets of the octagon font will be important symbology of Christian baptism, including the paschal image of Christ. This Cairo symbol is a sacred sign of our Easter promise. On the north and south faces will be the Alpha and Omega, respectively. This is a sign of eternity as God is the first and the last in our baptismal faith. And finally, on the floor of the lower basin will be a symbol of the Holy Spirit, a spirit that's present in our baptism, a spirit that's present as we walk past the font to remember our baptism whenever we're in worship. I'm excited about our sanctuary. The intent of the sanctuary remodel was twofold, to enhance an already beautiful and inspiring place of worship with updated fixtures and furnishings and two, to upgrade the functionality, versatility, and accessibility of this sacred space. As you can see, we are completely opening the space by removing the wall between the narthex and the sanctuary. We feel that this adds a better sense of welcoming inclusion and accessibility to the worship experience. Pews will be replaced with padded chairs and seating that's designed to enhance the worship experience. These chairs also provide a means of tailored seating for specific worship services or other events. Our chancel area will be slightly reconfigured to provide a more open experience. It will be dressed with hardwood floors and a stone veneer east wall. The current cross that hangs at the front and center of our sanctuary will remain but will be framed with wood and backlighting to enhance an already worshipful experience. Slight but pragmatic changes to the configuration of our choir alcove and balcony are also necessary as they provide further versatility to our music offerings and worship. Necessary upgrades include an independently controlled heating and cooling system to improve comfort for worshipers 
as well as maintenance for our organ, our pianos, and other music equipment. New lighting, sound, and electrical upgrades are all necessary as we consider the functionality of our worship space for the next generations. A new hospitality center will replace our existing kitchenette. This hospitality center will double the size of the current space, allowing us to serve coffee and other hospitality items for fellowship following worship and events. This space will feature additional storage for hospitality supplies, a new refrigerator, dishwasher, and microwaves. As we consider the importance of fellowship in our congregation, we're also remodeling our dated restrooms, as well as adding a brand new wellness room with seating, a small refrigerator, and changing station for parents. New seating and hospitality areas will all be included in the narthex. A new, more convenient and welcoming entrance to our office area will be created on the east side of our bell tower. A zero entry walk through the prayer garden will also provide access to the disabled or those who wish to avoid the stairs. This beautiful entrance will open into a reception and information area and it will provide much better access to that part of our building during the week. A new small conference room, family restroom, and lounge will all be included in this exciting part of the remodel. Thank you so much for taking the time to explore this exciting new enlightened project with me. I believe the Holy Spirit is very much a part of this process, and I want to again invite you to give some prayer and consideration to your support of the project. Without your support, this project cannot happen. I ask that you continue to pray for the Holy Spirit to be part of the process and to be a part of our mission as we look to serve this community and our congregation for generations to come.